Sure hope you didn't think we were done with these dipoles yet. Uh, the statement reads, for part A, a phonograph re record of radius R carrying a uniform surface charge sigma is rotating at constant angular velocity omega. Find its magnetic dipole moment. B. Find a magnetic dipole moment of the spinning spherical shell. Show that for points r, little r greater than big R, or points outside of the sphere, um, the potential is that of a perfect dipole. All right, fair enough. Here's the uh, diagram for a sphere. Uh, we've kind of already touched on this and how to set it up in a previous problem, so I'm going to move forward. So for part A, we see that for a ring, the vector area is just a, is a circle. So uh, m is equal to i pi r squared. Here, the thing that needs modification is the current. All right, so i is equal to sigma v dr, and we know that v is linear velocity, and we what we need is angular velocity. How do we get that? Well, that's omega r. All right. And so what we need to do is integrate this in order to find what the total magnetic dipole is. So we integrate from 0 to r over uh, dr. And uh, we simplify it through a pretty basic integral. And we end up with m equal pi sigma omega capital R to the fourth over 4. All right, pretty straightforward. Now for the fun one, what we need is I and A of the shaded ring from the diagram in order to find the dipole moment of the ring. Uh, and then from the ring, what we can do is find the total dipole of the whole thing by integrating it out. So much like before, we uh, need to find I, which is defined as dq over dt. What is dq? That is the omega, or excuse me, sigma omega r term from last time, but omega here is 2 pi r sine theta, and r is capital R since we're on the surface of the sphere, and we have to change that varyingly based on d theta. Uh, again, we saw that in the diagram. Now, dt is the time for one revolution, which we know is 2 pi over omega, um, whatever that omega actually is, not given to us, so it's just a variable. The 2 pi is cancel, leaving us with a current of uh, sigma omega r squared sine theta d theta. Now the vector area we know should be a uh, the area that mimics something of a circle where pi r squared. And here the r is modified by distance sine theta. So square them both and we're in the z hat direction. So we end up with a equal pi r squared sine theta squared z hat. Now let's uh, put this all together. The magnetic dipole moment of the ring is dm equals ia. Multiply that out. We see that the uh, dm is equal to sigma omega pi r to the fourth sine cube theta d theta dz, or z hat, excuse me. So integrate that out to find the total dipole moment of the shell. And we see that the uh, integral of zero to pi, since that's the physical constraint on the shell, of sine cube theta d theta in the z hat direction yields 4 pi over 3 sigma omega r to the fourth z hat. All right, that's pretty nice. Now what we can do is compare. So the dipole term in the multipole expansion for A is given as A dipole mu naught over 4 pi m sine theta over r squared phi hat, okay? So we just modify that to put m in the middle uh, so that when we substitute in m that we just found, we see that the four pi's cancel and we are left with mu naught sigma omega r to the fourth over three sine theta over r squared phi hat. But if you remember from the example in the book, this is also the exact potentials for points outside of the sphere. Evidently, a spinning sphere produces a perfect dipole field with no higher multipole contributions. And again, this should emphasize how easy it is to find the potential from these multipole approximations. And quite frankly, that was a lot easier than dealing with that nasty integral from the uh, definition of the potential.